Cook Kim Lam. Welcome to the Medical News Show on the SBTN from Washington, D.C. In this edition of the Medical News, we will talk about overweight and obesity. According to the National Institute of Health, on April 30, 2012, more than one-third of adults in the United States and nearly 17% of the nation's children are obese, which increases their chances of developing many health problems. In the year 2011, NIH funding for obesity research a total of $830 million in the efforts and hoping to reduce obesity. Here with us today is Dr. Sang Tran, who is currently practicing internal medicine in Falls Church, Virginia. He will help us understand more about obesity and the newest information on the weight loss drug. Welcome to the Medical News Show, Dr. Tran. Welcome to our show, and uh, hello, Mrs. Lam. Hello, Dr. Tran. Uh, today we're going to talk about obesity and uh, overweight. First of all, can you t uh, tell us how to tell the difference between an obesity person or an overweight person? The obesity is uh, considered as a medical uh, problem right now. And either to compare or to differentiate between the obesity and uh, overweight, the uh, World Health Organization, the WHO, using the BMI, the body mass index, to help to, to differentiate the two. But first of all, the obesity means you have too much fat in the body. Overweight could be related to the fat in the body, but it could be caused by the bones. The muscles of these people really have the heavy uh, body. So therefore, to differentiate these things, the work health organizations using the body mass index try to figure out which group is normal and which group really have obesity. Dr. Tran, would you please explain about the BMI system that you just mentioned? The BMI means the body mass index. You can use the symbol uh, ratio to figure out exactly what your BMI is. BMI is the ratio between the weight over the height by square meters. We use the international unit because the weight will calculate by kilograms and the height will calculate by meters square. So if you really you able to calculate your own BMI and compare with the charts, we have the, the BMI chart. But I think sometimes people don't have the chart. So you use your own and then measure the BMI and using that to compare with the other group. So this is the normal uh, BMI number. The person with BMI about 18 to 25 were considered normal. If you have BMI about 25 to 30, we call this is pre-obese. We try not to use overweight anymore, but it's, we call it pre-obese. Now, if you have BMI 30 to 35, then you belong to the class of obese class one. If over 35 to 40, the obese is class two. Now, any BMI over 40 we consider as morbid obesity or overweight severe, and we call it obese class three. So these are the number, I think it's difficult for you to remember, but remember the normal BMI is from 18 to 25. Now anything is below 18 consider underweight. So we are underweight, we have normal weight, and any weight over 30 considered obese. Dr. Tran, um, are there any other ways to measure obesity in a person besides the BMI system? We have a similar uh, way to uh, measure the, uh, the weight, uh, the obesity. I think it's, it's, if you look at the, all the pictures, you can see we can measure the circumference of the waist. And then we can use it to measure the circumference around the hip as well. You can use that or you can use the ratio between the waist and the hips and to really uh, calculate how much obese you may have. But I think to be simple, I think you just use the simple measurement 
of the waist around the, the umbilicus. You can see on the picture. Now, if you come up with the result, you can see it in any man with the waist circumference over 40, then considered to be obese. Any ladies with the waist circumference over 35 consider obese. Now, what's the result of that? The result of any obesity relate to the risk of having the having the risk of having hypertension, having high cholesterol, and having the risk of have heart attack. Right now, really people using more of the waist measurement because they relate to the fat in the abdomen. The fat in the abdomen really in the old day people still consider just the rich, the famous, usually have the big belly. But nowadays, since anybody with the, the, the large the waist measurement will consider high risk to have heart attack. For the Asian group, we go, we must be smaller. Therefore, the waist for men over 35 for Asian group consider obese. And the lady Asian woman with the waist over 31 consider to be obese. So the same, either Asian or Europeans or uh, Western person then consider to be obese and with that level. So I just try to remember, you can measure your own and just follow these. You can see how much really obese you may get uh, in the future or now. So to prepare to changing that your lifestyle to get a little bit better uh, measurements in the future. Dr. Tran, um, overweight and obesity is a major health problem in the United States and nationwide. So what uh, are the causes or the risk factor that lead into the weight problem? I think everybody understands if you eat more, if you don't really work or, or consume or exercise, you gain weight. I think it's completely true. But it's in medical really uh, view, we have to look at a little bit more in detail. The way you get the food in counts by calories. For instance, uh, uh, one Big Mac could be bring in about 750 calories for that person. Now, if you eat more than calories that you, you spend, then the extra calorie will con to be converted to fat and to keep in the body to use in the future. When people get hungry or they miss meal and the body need carry, they will burn these fat to provide carry for the body. So the cause is people eat more than they, they consume or they spend. Number two, that really they don't get enough exercise or they have another medical problem. One of the simple examples of that is the thyroid function. When the thyroid is really not working or hyperactive, then the body really cannot consume all the calories. We get cold, lazy, doesn't want to really move around, doesn't want to do anything at all, so they gain weight. So that's related to the medical condition. Now, menopause, anxiety, stress also put the people eat more and less exercise. People who depress really, they sleep all day, but they eat more because it's compensated for whatever they're missing in their life. Now, beside these things, we have the medication. Remember, a lot of medication can cause an overweight or obesity. Birth control is one of them. Any other uh, antipsychotic medication. And the best medication now in the market called Zyprexa can increase the weight to about 5, 15 pounds in about a year. And the steroid medication, Brentizone, Dexamethasone, usually we use for treating asthma or arthritis, also causing the, a lot of weight gains. Now, quit smoking is interesting because we will really quit smoking. They gain maybe five, six pounds easily after they quit smoking because they eat more, they feel better, and they increase weight. So that's the, the whole complex pictures of what the underlying cause of obesity. So I think it's my advice to all of you is you have to really consult with your doctor to find out exactly what the underlying cause of your obesity before we start treatment and get the plan really to work on that. And uh, I think that's the best way to deal with the obesity. Dr. Tran, what's about the children? 17% of the nation's children are obese. Why? 
the children obesity is now the burden for the society. It's not just for family, for school system, but for the whole nation and around the world as well. The reason because a lot of study going on right now, I think it's one of the studies, they studied uh, 6,000 uh, obese children and they found out it's among them is about 23% related to gene. But it's very interesting because the studies show that people with that gene predispose them to be obese in the future. But the study also show if they were changing the lifestyle, the lifestyle changing can suppress the gene. So therefore, any really children born with the gene obesity may be not develop obesity in the future. If they know from the beginning, they're changing the lifestyle, they know how to eat, they know how to really exercise, then we can prevent obesity in the future. Now, secondly, the food is important because you know this is because more people really from uh, the uh, South America, usually the food really trigger a lot of obesity compared with the Asian group. Now, the habit of eating, eating so many food a day with a lot of uh, different food and different things and drinking a lot of soft drink, also this is one of the reasons why the children get fat easily. Now, Lastly, it's very important because the level of activity of children now, they're changing a lot. They don't have really activity outdoor anymore because they have a lot of activity inside the house. TV, games, any activity on the internet really attract the children more than in the past. In the past, they usually they don't have much TV, they don't have much game, they have much computer. Usually they go out and play with the other kids in around the neighborhood, or they play soccer, they play football, they play all kinds of activity. But right now, really, the limitation of the activity is one of the key we have to deal with to in order to really solve the problem of obesity in children. And uh, would you please tell us what are the what the complications are of an obese person uh, regarding to the health? I think this uh, not people uh, not so many people know and are aware that obesity can trigger a lot of, of issues or complications in their health. And obesity considered right now is a medical condition or medical disease because the complication of obesity is trigger number one, the damage of the joint of the, the knee and the hips is very important, especially in the elder group. Uh, certainly, the too much obesity can trigger fatty liver. Fatty liver is the, one of the causes of cirrhosis liver, when liver become hardening and not able to function well anymore. The ladies over 40, menopause, obesity, that's the key to open up the reason why they develop gone stones. That's when the, the gone bladder have a lot of stone in them. And heart attack is one of the dangerous complications for obesity. The risk of obesity on a heart attack is very high. So therefore, the first thing we have to reduce weight in order to prevent heart attack in the future. Hypertension, diabetes is very common. Now lastly, the people who really are obese, they have developed another problem we call snoring. And snoring affects the family life, and also they have the risk of having sleep apnea. Sleep apnea means when they drink sleep, they suddenly stop breathing. And they feel like something is difficult to get the oxygen in. So these are the complex pictures of all the complications causing by obesity. Dr. Tran, um, would you please tell us what kind of treatments are available nowadays for obesity? Right now we have only four uh, treatment available. Number one is changing your lifestyle. I mean, you need to be in diet. Number two, you need to improve your exercise. Now, if the tooth is failed, then you have to consider using medication because it's the really not easy to change your lifestyle. The medication also issue. And now, lastly, is if, if everything really fell, then people really have very obese and then have a lot of complication, then the physician or the medical professional maybe recommend them to have surgery. Dr. Tran, can you elaborate a little bit more about lifestyle change? How is that? Lifestyle changes is the big uh, really approach uh, we have to changing because the way we look at the food, we, the way we eat, everything. Number one, it's just you have to be motivated to make life.
start changing. You cannot really keep the same. You have to have some idea, some understanding about the disease, have some motivation to do it, and how to do it. Because first, you have to choose healthy choices, avoid high carbohydrate food, I mean there's a lot of uh, pasta, a lot of rice, a lot of, of uh, cake, and a lot of soft drink. We have to really reduce these medications. And also, I think symbol is to reduce the portion of the food you, of your meal. I think, you know, breakfast you have to reduce, and you have to reduce the lunch, or you cut into half any orders. And uh, for instance, for the Asian group, you can reduce the bowl of noodles into a small one instead of choosing the big one. So I think it's, that's the way we're changing lifestyle. I mean, it's so important. If the people really decide to do it, they may achieve something from the way that we have to deal with obesity. Dr. Tran, could you talk about exercise, that how exercise can be effective to help the obese? I think exercise is the most exciting nowadays because you can see the gym everywhere, people exercise everywhere, including the world, and uh, everywhere, China, Vietnam, and United States, and people always uh, completely exercise. But remember, exercise needs to be correct and have to enough uh, calorie spending because you have to exercise correctly uh, to prevent any complication from exercise induced and you have to exercise to, to really consume a lot of calorie. For instance, if you walk for about half an hour, you may really using about 400 calorie. But if you really go back home and you feel hungry and eat one bowl of rice or something, a cake or something, and stop by McDonald's to eat a, a McDonald's uh, burger, then you just get enough 400 calorie easily. So either you work hard, but then you get bending very easily, then really exercise doesn't work. So therefore, exercise always go combined with the diet. It's very important. Combine the two, you will achieve something. Dr. Tran, um, now let's talk about the weight loss medication. There are so many medications for uh, losing weight. Are they safe? Are they effective? Would that help? The medication is one of the important uh, factors in to reduce this weight in obesity. But the fact of reality is we don't have really the good outcome from the medication. And the history shows that in 1977, the first medication launch in the market to reduce weight, a causing problem after 10 years using in the market, and they found that the medication can trigger some uh, vanvula defect in the uh, normal people. Therefore, they were discontinued or take off the market completely. And then in 2010, the another one is Cibutramine. Cibutramine is also working very well, but then they found that the patient may have the develop increase the blood pressure. Therefore, it's what discontinued completely. Right now, only two medications survive and still using in the market. The first one is cynical. Cynical is really basically prevent the absorption of fat in the food to the intestine, for, but they cannot prevent the absorption of carbohydrate or sugar. Therefore, the effectiveness is limited. So you don't expect a lot of weight loss if you use the medication to prevent the absorption of fat. Now, fentermin also is still in the market because they just reduce the appetite. Uh, we call this medication, fentermin, the appetite suppressant. We can use it for people who really have the habit of eating a lot, so they have to consider to reduce the appetite in order to reduce the, the food that they consume every day. Dr. Tran, for very recently, the Food and Drug Administration just approved two new medications for diet. Number one, why after 13 years they finally approved the, this medication? Number two, what are these medications? It's very interesting the way the FDA has approved the new medication. I think the FDA respond to the, the need of the, the public's um, and then because it's right now the obesity become the burden for the society. It's a lot of physicians expecting to get some new medication to help their patients. And also so a lot of school system, society, different group already spent a lot of money to create weight loss program and teaching, educate people, all kind. But I think for the medication for the last 13 years, FDA really hasn't really decided to put any new medication in the market. Right now, they decide to put the two new medications. The first one is Belvic, 
is approved in June 27, 2012. And it's just shortly after two weeks. It surprised me as well when I found out the FDA already approved the second one just in two weeks' time. This is the first time in history they approved the same group of medication to reduce the weight. That's mean really the, the demand of the society is high. I think the need of consumers is high. Therefore, the FDA have to respond to that, even though they're aware that this medication has some side effects they need to be aware of. Dr. Tran, can you tell us um, how effective these new medications are and are there any um, dangerous side effects? I think we both need to know, I think, is Belvix is working on the brain. And what they do is really to activate the serotonin 2C receptor. Serotonin receptor means because any stimulation, the uh, factor affecting the brain will stimulate the receptor. Receptor transmit these messages to release the dopamine and anything that make people feel either sad or happy or increase appetite or doesn't want to eat at all. So the serotonin C will directly involve the changing in the way they look at the food. So the medication will work on the brain. Um, so therefore, that person doesn't really want to eat a lot like before. They study on 8,000 patients in different areas in the world, and they found that, that after a year of taking medication, the person can reduce their weight until about 3 to 5% of their total body weight. That's very, very interesting and very impressive. But remember, all weight medication have some side effects. Remember, you have dry mouth, dizziness, constipation, especially serotonin syndrome. Because the, work, the medication work on serotonin, and serotonin syndrome means when too much serotonin were released, they may trigger heart beat very fast, People may develop fever, they may have some kind of hallucinations. So these are the symptoms that we need to be aware of when taking medication. I think the medication right now is just uh, prepare and uh, the product of the, uh, one of the company in Switzerland and called Arena. And they I plan to launch the medication at the end of this year and also maybe the early months of next year, 2013. The FDA is still working on that try to put these control on these medications to make sure it's safe for the consumer uh, in the future. The second medication really is well known because Simia. Simia is a combination of the two medications right now, the phantom and that we're talking about, is just to suppress the appetite. They, they combine with the other medication called tupiramate. Tupiramate is a medication using to treat seizure or convulsion. And during that group, and they found that the patient taking this medication, they really don't like to eat, and they really are losing their appetite. So the combination of the two may help the patient to reduce the, the weight. Now, the always has some complications, and um, the one of the complications of the seniors is hypertension. Uh, beside that, people may, may have difficulty sleeping, they may have a little bit of constipation and may see relate them to my degree of memory difficulties uh, when taking medication. So these are really, uh, these are product of uh, the uh, virus, uh, one company in California. I think they plan also launch at the end of this year and also next year in 2013 uh, for people to use it. Dr. Tran, are there any surgery procedure to help the obese people and now uh, when uh, does an obese person need to have this uh, procedure? I think it's, uh, it's a surgery is, uh, to treat obesity is a serious approach and uh, people after they fail the diet, exercise, including medication and when they develop uh, different complications from the obesity then they have the uh, recommendation to go to surgery Anybody with the BMI is uh, over 40 and not reduced by diet, exercise, and medication, they may have to go to surgery if they want to reduce weight. Uh, certain group is uh, BMI over 35, but they have sleep apnea and they cannot function. They're so drowsy during the day, they cannot function uh, during the day, then they may have to go to surgery to reduce. Nowadays, we're talking a lot of on uh, the commercial, they're talking about on the TV, a lot about surgery to reduce the, uh, the diabetes. 
uh, for people who are really taking insulin. So after surgery, they don't need to use insulin anymore, and the weight sometimes reduced to about 100 pounds with surgery. Right now in the market, we have only two approach, the gastric bending and gastric bypass. If you look at the picture, you can see uh, how the bending. Bending means they will tie up the stomach and make it smaller. Only one portion of the stomach we use it and to re-digest the food and transfer to it the intestine. The second group is bypass. You can see the intestine will connect directly to the stomach. So instead of go through the whole way naturally, they have to pass past that. And the food will go to the intestine and go to the colon and get out right away. So therefore, it doesn't matter how the person can eat, but the food absorption is very, very small and limited. With the approach, very successful, but complications still there. For long-term medication, they have complications from vitamin, so they have to have vitamin. They have, may have some problems with the different complications from the unusual way of the digestion of the food. So be careful. The surgery is very effective. But the complication is there. We need to discuss with the surgeon before you really make the decision to go through surgery. Dr. Tran, there are so many diet drugs or diet medication at herbal. What do you think of these herbal diet medication? Herbal medicine is root of any medication that we have for a thousand years. So really nothing new for the medical field. But the thing is, is the, uh, the benefit of the science and technology is we can figure out exactly what the ingredients in the herbs they're able to use to treat different diseases. And remember, all the medication we use in the past really come from the herbs. But now, see, the herb is very popular in the markets. But I think, I think it's so far, we don't have the approval from FDA, any kind of herbal officially approved to treat the obesity or to reduce the weight in obesity. So until then, we have to wait until the other study come out. Dr. Tran, before we close the show, what advice would you have for our audience in the term of losing weight? <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's easy to talk. I can give you all kind of information. But the, the thing is, the advice to you is really, number one, try to do one thing. Try to avoid any sweet stuff and reduce the portion of your meal. Try not to eat the same way before. You can reduce, you can enjoy whatever food in the world that you like to, but then you just eat less. You just order a small portion of the food. And try to increase exercise, very important. Reduce the alcohol and also reduce the salt intake. I think this is the key for, to reduce the weight. I think it's just that's, that's the simple advice, but I think it's sometimes difficult to do it. Thank you, Dr. Tran. That is all the time we have for our medical news show. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you for watching our show today, and hopefully we can provide you some information that's useful in your daily life, and also to prevent the uh, complication for one kind of related to the food and the obesity. And again, thank you, uh, Mrs. Lam. That was Dr. Sang Tran, who just shared with us the information on obesity and the newest medication. We hope that the information Dr. Tran provided to us today has shed more light on the obesity. That is all the time we have for our medical news show. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Kim Lam. We'll see you next time on the medical news.